Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'll be talking about fundamentals of mass transfer, uh, the basic introduction. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, an introduction to concepts in mass transfer. Um, secondly, we'll be looking at Fick's uh, first law of diffusion, which is a very important one to know in mass transport. And then we'll look at an example problem uh, for practice in this uh, field. And I should just wanted to quickly note that uh, this is important knowledge for engineers of uh, many disciplines, any discipline, um, and I only included engineers, but I should also say that scientists of all capacities should want to know more about mass transfer, which is a very important phenomenon that occurs all around us all the time. So let's get started with some definitions. Uh, so what is mass transfer, you may be wondering. Uh, but basically it's a, the net movement of a chemical, chemiophysical species, um, in space-time of concentration. So a change in space and time of some concentration. Uh, and so there are two main methods of this mass transfer. Uh, that would be mass transfer arising from convection, which is macroscopic or bulk motion flow. And then there's uh, diffusion, which is the one I'll be focusing on today, which is mass transfer that arises from uh, molecular motion, um, and so, for the for convection, uh, the change in concentration with respect to time mostly depends on fluid dynamics, bulk flow, like I said. Uh, but diff regular diffusion is with respect to a coordinate system in uh, with molecular motion. And so, for diffusive transfer, there's main two main types. There's homo of course homogeneous systems, which just simply mean that they're well mixed. And then non-homogeneous systems mean that they are not well mixed, and so we have net movement, um, net movement of particles. Uh, and so I should note that homogeneous systems are far easier to solve because of the this well mixed uh, condition. It makes the differential equations much easier to solve. So we'll be looking at homogeneous today, but that's not to say that non-homogeneous don't appear as well. So Fick's law, um, I'll be, we'll be talking about the first law, and that is, um, it's a mathematical way the, that um, explains um, diffusive mass transfer. And so I'm just going to quickly write it out um, in its equation form, and then I'll like, explain it in um, better words. Uh, so essentially the equation relates a diffusive flux J, to concentration uh, change under steady state conditions uh, and I've provided the 1D case and the 3D case and so like I said JA is diffusive flux of J of, of some species A arbitrarily and that's the amount of substance per unit area per unit time mole per uh, meter squared second uh, in SI units um, DAB is a uh, diffusive diffusivity coefficient um, and the uh, A and B just mean it's a, with reference to two molecules, A and B arbitrarily. Um, it can also be with reference to one. That's just how it, it, I've been taught to write it. And, and the units for the constant are um, meters squared per second. So that's, a, a, yes, meters squared per second. Uh, lastly, we have CA, which is simply the concentration of this arbitrary species A. Um, and I should note that in the 3D form, so we have two forms of the equation. Uh, we have the 1D form where you can see that the first derivative, the position derivative, is just the chain of concentration with respect to x. Now in the 3D case, we have the diffusivity coefficient times, uh, that is a gradient operator times x. And the gradient operator, if you're not familiar with that, which at this point you should be, is just the first derivative expanded in each coordinate plane. Uh, and that could be if you have a 3D, that's if you have a 3D situation, it can also reduce to a 2D situation where you don't have Z. Um, but today we're just going to look at 1D situations for simplicity, but uh, the 3D situations are of course the most interesting and uh, of most significance because we live in three dimensions. Uh, so we should also define total flux, and total flux is equivalent to the convective flux uh, plus the diffusive flux. And total flux, it's given by this equation right here, and that is um, we assume uh, constant temperature, pressure, and density of the solution. 
and uh, we represent total flux as Na. And the convective flux, like uh, which I won't be going into too much detail today, but it's simply just Ca times, uh, that's V star underscore uh, minus the diffusive flux, which is fixed first law, the diffusivity coefficient times the um, del time uh, del operator with respect to concentration of A. And so this V star uh, underscore is just the molar average velocity, which is defined as the, um, it's uh, just the average concentration uh, times the the mass average velocity of each species over the total concentration, which also reduces to the mole fraction times the mass average velocity. But we won't be going into that too much today. Um, and just to wanted to supply a nice example of diffusion, um, which, like I said, occurs all around us. Uh, this is a micro scale example, but simply just uh, cellular diffusion is a mass diffusion mass uh, diffusion problem where we have a gradient uh, one side the concentration of this cellular component is higher than on the other uh, side and so we have a, our membrane is the lipid bilayer and you can see as time goes on we have a diffusion where our uh, you know the area of high concentration some of the molecules are diffusing into the area of low concentration to reach an equilibrium so now that we've established some fundamentals, let's look at a practice problem. And this practice problem is diffusion across a thin barrier uh, separating two fluids. And let me quickly just draw out the problem and then I will explain it. Um, so this is just the, the box I'm drawing is the membrane. And so what you can see is what we have is some membrane length L. So it starts at zero and goes to L. And that's separate, separating, um, that's separating fluid one and fluid two, and those regions are both well mixed, and the um, the boundary of those regions is um, the initial condition, if you will, is that the concentration of one is fixed at C one naught, and the concentration of two is fixed at C two naught, and the variable region is within the membrane. So there are a few uh, specification parameters for the problem, um, and so that is that species A is dissolved um, thoroughly and can freely move without the system. Uh, a is uniformly uh, dissolved and dilute, um, which and the, di the dilute specification means that we can use fixed law. And the flux of A is only in Z, so that helps us reduce our uh, system to the uh, 1D scenario. Um, okay, so let's, uh, so the, the questions that the problem wants us to solve are one, find the concentration profile, C of Z, of species A in the barrier, and secondly, find NAZ, the total flux of A in frame Z. Okay, um, so let me quickly just redraw the problem back here so we have it for reference. Okay, so solving, um, so first, in order to find the concentration profile, we're, we're going to write the total flux equation. We have no convection, so total flux is just equal to um, diffusivity coefficient times the change in uh, uh, m um, the change in the mole fraction A uh, with respect to Z. We know that dz um, ddz is zero because of the specification in the problem. So now we can solve for dx. A D Z, and so what we see is that um, the first derivative dx A D Z is equal to N A over negative D A B, and so what we see is that the first derivative is a constant. So this just simply reduces to a linear defect that we have to solve. Well, we want to find a function for x A of Z, concentration of A per Z, um, in a solution of the form x a of z is equal to alpha plus beta z. That would be a first order differential equation. And so what we can do is uh, we have some boundary conditions that we can write out and those are given above at the top of the problem. And those are that the concentration at zero is fixed at the C1 naught, which is some um, you know value that we don't know. We just represent it in terms of a variable. And secondly, that C of L at uh, 
point L is C2 naught, another variable that you know we're just given, but it's fixed at that. So we can plug that into our um, model equation, and essentially what you'll find is that alpha just equals C1 naught, and then when we plug in alpha and beta, I'm sorry, alpha and the second initial condition, we get beta is just C2 naught minus C1 naught over L. So the uh, difference between those concentrations over the length between the membrane, which is pretty interesting. And so now, I'm just going to, sorry, draw it one more time. Um, this is the last time. But now what we can do is we can just use the boundary conditions to solve our equation, which when, it, when we plug it in uh, to the, the differential equation, A and B, alpha and beta, we get C of Z is C1 naught plus C2 naught minus C1 naught over L times Z. And this, in fact, is our answer to part one. This is our concentration profile. So now for part two, we need to find Na, or NAZ or Na, so we can use fixed law, and we can just write out um, the, the condition that we've already uh, worked out, which is that uh, the change in XACA, which is synonymous over DZ, is equal to negative NAZ over DAB, which is something that we've established previously. So we need to find what DCA, DZ is. And so if you notice, we just found what CAZ is. We have that expression up there. So all we need to do is take the first derivative of that expression to find DCA, DZ. So DCA, DZ is just simply um, C2 naught minus C1 naught over L. And so what we can do is we can, um, we can plug in uh, this condition into the equation above in red. And so we get C2 naught minus C1 naught over L is equivalent to and negative NAZ over DAB, and now we just need to isolate NAZ to find the total flux. And of course, there's no convective flux here, so we just get the expression that NAZ is equal to negative DAB, diffusivity coefficient, times C2 naught minus C1 naught over L. And notice that it's a constant, which is pretty interesting. Um, and that's just because of the way we the problem is defined. It's a one-dimensional case that is homogeneous, and so the... Um, the total flux in this membrane system is a constant, which is pretty interesting. And so you can, uh, the box up there, the first box contains the answer to the first question, and the second box contains the answer to the second question. Um, now, I should say that if you didn't know how to solve the first order differential equation, I suggest that you go check out another video or some uh, tutorials on how to solve differential equations. Usually that's a prerequisite for a mass transfer class. Um, but if you're trying to learn on your own, then I suggest that you just um, go take a look at that yourself because that's something that you need to know how to do this. And so hopefully in the next video we'll tackle some more challenging problems, maybe of three dimensions. But I hope this helped you for now. Thanks.